So you're looking for a virtual address for your business. Maybe you want to keep your personal home address separate from your business address. There's a right way to do this and there's a wrong way to do this. The wrong way to do this is actually going to get you into some trouble with the Secretary of State, with the IRS, and with banks if you're trying to get business credit. But if you do this right, you can have a professional address for your business at a nominal cost. So let's dive in and stick to the end because I'll show you my secret method of finding legitimate offices that won't get you flagged as a virtual address. All right, first up is a UPS store. Now this will only work as a mailing address. I have lots of UPS store addresses and I do use them for mailing address purposes. It's convenient because it's a small fee. They can send you your mail or you can go pick them up. It's a professional address and it doesn't give away your real address. But on the flip side, you're not supposed to use this address as your physical main business address. Now, half the time you can get away with it. The other half the time, it can get flagged. If the address gets flagged, banks or the Secretary of State can ask you to update and correct your address or you would risk losing your account. In fact, recently one of my students reported that their address would not even get accepted with the Secretary of State. It makes sense though because when you register your business you're supposed to have a main physical address and then you're allowed to have a mailing address if you're using the mailing address as the physical address like I said there's a 50 50 chance that, that can catch up to you you're ultimately going to make the best decision for you in your business and do your own due diligence but I'm just giving you an overview of what I've seen speaking of which another company that's very popular that allows not just virtual address but also virtual office space is Regis they're probably the most popular and I did have a Regis office at one point I was able to get a real office address I had to pay a little bit extra but I was able to get my company name in the lobby and and it was a very easy professional way to meet clients. But again, there are many cases where even this type of address will not get accepted. Let me give you an example of exactly what I mean. There are some banks that will check the USPS database. And if your address is flagged as a commercial mail receiving agency, they may give you trouble with you using that address as your business address. Now, there's a lot of reasons as to why they may or may not be doing this. Some people speculate that there's just so many businesses that are kind of fly by night that run out of those addresses and that's what gets it flagged. But I think the simplest reason is that you're actually not working from that address. If you want to check out the tool and more information about CMRAs, just use the zip code address at the USPS.com website. When you use this tool, you're going to have to spend a few minutes looking at each variation of the address. But just to show you the area that I'm talking about, it says commercial mail receiving agency and then a It'll either say yes or no right below that. It's going to be easier if your address is not flagged as a commercial mail receiving agency. Now, just to be super clear, there's nothing really wrong with having a virtual address for mailing purposes. In fact, I think it's a smart idea. Where people are having challenges is when they're saying that their main physical address is their virtual address. Did you know that on a business credit application, it'll actually say main physical business address and then below it, it'll say mailing address. So it is okay to use both. I'm just giving you some background information so that as you're picking your virtual address, you know as much information as you need to make the best possible decision. One of my students recently turned me on to this website. Again, do your own due diligence. So go ahead and check it out, see if it makes sense for you. They are called virtualpostmail.com. They have different services as far as virtual mailboxes, etc. According to their website, they have over 33,000 customers. And you can see if something like this would make sense for you. By the way, when you're researching this topic, you're gonna to see people mention all sorts of opportunities like DaVinci, or Opus. And again, for mailing purposes, they work great. They don't work as well if you're going to use them as your main physical business address. Oftentimes, you fly under the radar, but that's not always the best way to set up your business from scratch. All right, so what do I recommend? So I have two scenarios for you. You can use your home address and add a suite. So for example, if you have an area in your home where you're doing business, that could be your suite. So you could have your home address as 123 Main Street and your business address could be 123 Main Street Suite A or Suite 1. You will not have a hard time getting business credit with a home-based business. That is a myth from many, many years ago. How do I know this? I've interviewed 4,200 banks with the intent of finding the best local community banks and credit unions that offer business credit cards and business lines of credit. 
credit. But we asked the banks directly firsthand if having a home-based business would be a challenge for that business to get business credit. Even though you'll see a lot of conflicting information with what I just said to you, if you call the banks directly, you're going to get the true answer. Post COVID, almost everybody works from home. But even prior to COVID, my engineer, architect, realtors, HVAC companies, plumbing, marketing companies, e-commerce companies, YouTube influencers, all work from home, have many successful, profitable businesses. All right, now let's talk about my secret hack, my secret technique. This works very well. And what you do is you find business owners that have space and you simply get an office address from them. Examples would be realtors, title companies, attorneys. My best friend has an office at an attorney office. They have extra space, they're not using it. They rent him a desk for a very small fee and that's his office. He can come and go as he pleases. My last office address, I pay $100 per month to them to use their mailbox. It's a real office building. It has multiple businesses out of that address. It's not registered as a virtual address. Very important tip, by the way, when you're looking at an address, Google the address. See if the word virtual address comes up and is blaring in your face that it's a virtual address. If so, I would actually stay away from using that as your address. Okay, so back to my last office address. I have my mail there, I do have signage out front, and I only pay 100 bucks a month. Now fast forward to the office I'm in right now. This building that I'm in has four businesses. The suite that I am in is an old title company. A lot of title companies, realtors, brokers, they have all this office space, they're not using it. Everyone's working from home. So for as little as $100, you could offer that landlord an opportunity for them to make a little bit of money and for you to come pick up your mail every few days. In my case, I like this space so much, I ended up taking over the entire half of the wing. All right, so where would you find these opportunities? One, driving around. Just look around. Two, Facebook groups, especially mom-to-mom Facebook groups. The communities in Facebook groups are incredible. When I say mom-to-mom, I mean local township Facebook groups where all the people get together. They're talking about school districts. They're talking about the restaurants in the area that are opening, that are closing, talking about the weather, whatever. You could post in there that you're looking for office space. Someone is going to know someone who's going to know someone. And that's actually how I found this office. Lastly, use a site like LoopNet, but there's a certain way you have to do it. All right, so I'm gonna type in office for lease. I'll type in the state, I'll type in the area that I'm in, and I'll click on search. Now, if you don't know this about buildings, they classify them as A-class, B-class, C-class. A-class are newer buildings, they're way more high tech, and they're way more expensive. C-class are older buildings, built closer to the 70s, less high tech, a lot cheaper, and the landlords are way more approachable. That's actually what we're looking for. So I'm gonna skip some of these and I'm gonna keep scrolling down. And what do we have? We have an office building on North Bridge Street, which is actually where my old office was. And you can see that it's an old house. A lot of the offices in Somerville, New Jersey are old houses that are now converted to office space. This building here is going to be self-managed. It's going to be a friendly landlord that knows the area very well. Very approachable to make a call to them, visit with them, and see if they would rent some office space to you or even offer you a virtual address. In exchange for 100 bucks a month, you would occasionally come by and pick up your mail. Here's a couple of more office buildings that meet the criteria of who we would call or visit. We know that they're looking to rent out their office space because the property is literally listed for rent. This is a straightforward technique that can get you a legitimate address, give you an opportunity one day to expand if you wanna have more office space, and keep your business address separate from your home address. I know a lot of people are concerned with privacy. This is a direction that I would consider. By the way, a question might come up where if I have one office address and then I have my suite, so let's just say I'm suite four, what do we do if we have more than one business at that suite? All you do is you add a letter. So you could have suite four A, suite four B, suite four C. Talk to your mail person when they deliver your mail. They wanna know what business mail is supposed to be delivered at that mailbox. So we're being transparent and the mail person is happy because now they know when they get a piece of mail at this address, which mailbox to put it in. Again, being upfront, being transparent, oftentimes will get you a lot further than the alternative. Whatever you decide for your virtual address is up to you. Hopefully I opened your eyes to some pros and cons so that you can make the best decision.